Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. After his resurrection, Jesus imparted profound truths to his disciples. In doing greater works, Apostle Oromo Sayi reveals these transformative teachings. Learn the secrets Jesus shared for living a life of extraordinary impact. Discover how to walk in greater works through faith and action. Step into your calling and do greater works in His name, empowering you to live out the teachings of the risen Christ. Lord, tonight I ask that you open your counsel to us and release your spirit among us in the name of Jesus. By all means, glorify yourself and make for yourself a great name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please, you may be seated. Uh, the people on the council, can you give me some feedback on these monitors? Turn your Bible with me quickly. We'll do Bible study for 25 or 30 minutes. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. We'll do Bible study for 25 to 30 minutes. Verse number 1. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the father which said he ye have heard of me for John truly baptized with water but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence when they were therefore come together they asked of him saying Lord will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel and he said unto them it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem. And in all Judea. And in Samaria. And unto the uttermost part of the earth every Bible scholar everyone that is competent in the ministry of dispensing the counsel of God knows that there were 40 days between the resurrection of Jesus now I wait don't play yet. Let me get the heart of the people that I came to talk to. There were 40 days in between the time that Jesus resurrected and the time that he ascended publicly. 
in the which days Jesus began a capacity building program. There was one thing that was obvious and what was obvious was the, the in, incompetence of the functionaries that will be saddled to the responsibility of extending the frontiers of the kingdom of God. So Jesus decided to dedicate those 40 days interval between his resurrection and his ascension to carry out training, capacity building, to increase the understanding of these functionaries that will be saddled with the responsibility of kingdom advancement. Now, what we have in the book of Acts chapter 1 is an executive summary of that capacity building program. And what I want to attempt to achieve tonight is to peep into the notes that Jesus used for that instruction time and to glean from scriptures key points that were part and parcel of that capacity building program. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. I want to leave verse 1 for Sunday. Because verse 1 will take us three days if we want to do verse 1. So we'll leave it for Sunday. Sunday I will give you a clue then you, you study uh, the rest of the matter. The Bible began and this is a testimony that was given by Luke the evangelist. Luke began by making reference to a previous treatise that he wrote to Theophilus. And the previous treatise he was talking about was the book of Luke. Now, if you have time, come with me. Let's do an analysis of the book of Luke. Then we'll come back here. Because the book of Acts is built on the foundation of the previous treatise. If by any means you do not understand the meat of this previous treatise, it will be impossible for you to understand what God is orchestrating in the book of Acts. The book of Acts is the manifestation of a different regime in the administration of the economy of God. Uh, there, there were previous things that God did leading up to this critical moment that would define whether or not the body of Christ will have the capacity to fulfill that global enterprise of witness that Jesus was calling her into. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. You are not here. You are not here actually. But you will soon come. So the Bible spoke about a, a previous treatise and I don't have time for that. But we need to get that foundation before we can understand current orchestrations in the book of Acts. The Bible says that Jesus began both to do and to teach. It will surprise you that the entire content of the book of Luke, it was distilled. And what came out of that volume, in summary, was the things that Jesus began, first of all, to do, and then what? To teach. That means Jesus' teaching ministry was based on a certain doing which we need to investigate. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. The doing that was spoken about is the preoccupation of living a life that is utterly obedient to the will of God. Jesus will make statements like, I am not capable in myself. I have not come here to be creative. What I've come to do is to find out what my father is doing 
and I plug in to become an administrative infrastructure to achieving that which my father is doing. It means that Jesus' work is dependent on his father's work. Jesus only walks in the direction that his father is walking. And Jesus will not walk if his father does not walk. Anytime you see Jesus doing something, it's because it has been articulated in the spirit that his father is doing something. See, in, in, in modern day church, modern day Christian philosophy, because we have set schedules, even if God is not saying anything, the pastor must preach on Sunday morning. But not Jesus. You know, I, I, maybe. <laughs> Do I have liberty, Pastor? Do I have liberty to be myself? <laughs> Jesus will do nothing if his father is not at work. So the way we know Jesus' father is at work is when he begins to do something. Then we know that, okay, it is because he saw that his father was busy and he has articulated the kind of effort that his father is putting in place that is what informs his own action. So the Bible reveals that the secret of the teaching ministry of Jesus was drawn from his preoccupation in the, in the act of obeying God. And it will interest you to know that Jesus had a spoken ministry that lasted for three and a half years. But he had an obedience ministry which was for three decades. So, 10 years of obedience to one year of preaching. Think about it. Now, you know, you know today, it is as though the only thing a preacher can do is to talk. Jesus in the days of his flesh did not have a pulpit. Think about it. The things Jesus did that we call his ministry were done in practical life situations. Maybe somebody, somebody died and they are just going, there's a procession, people are weeping, going for burial. Then he just shows up and says, stand up, stand up, okay. Then he, he moves up. That's, that, that's what we call his ministry. He had no pulpit where he was preaching. Because the pulpits be, belong to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. I'm just trying to. Hallelujah. The people that must preach every Tuesday, those days, were the Pharisees. They had, they had a system for ministry. Jesus had no system, no place in that system. So his own ministry was captured in practical life circumstances. Jesus was not looking for pulpits, he was looking for people. If you study the Old Testament, you, you will realize that the description of a prophet in those days was not a preacher was someone that was in custody of the council of God. And any time the technocrats in government stumbled on situations that were beyond their capacities in education, they switched into spiritual knowledge because of the presence of the prophets in those territories. Prophets had seats in the place of government to bring the dimensions of heaven and the perspective of heaven into governance and nation building. They were not poor pit people. Now, are you still here? If we take the poor pit from your life, what is left? If nothing is left, it means you did not fulfill your quota of obedience before you began to teach. There was no doing in your own life. Your life just began with teaching. And that's why your teaching doesn't have enough authority 
to transform, to change, to pierce the soul of a nation. They are not prophet. When he encounters his father in the place of prayer, he goes to the water side and he looks for someone who can lend him his boat because he wants to talk. After that service, if you come to the water side tomorrow, you will not see him. <laughs> you will not see him. The reason was because, the reason why he was that fluid was because for him, it was more about obedience than talking. So anywhere the father was, that's where you will find Jesus. If, if the father moves, Jesus will move. But we will die with the microphone in our hands. When obedience becomes a critical factor in the dispensing of ministry, you, you, you will be fluid. You, even you yourself, your life will so change. Yes, once upon a time in my own practice of ministry, this pulpit, I left it, the one, the ministry I pioneered, I left it for 11 years. Who does that? And yes, I left it for 11 years. And I became an intercessor for 11 years. Left pulpit to pray. If it's about obedience, you will not follow the normal pattern. <laughs> if it's about obedience, you will not have the contemporary description of how people see a preacher. If you are regimented, restricted, and rooted, it means that you are a professional. You are not into obedience. You are a professional preacher. So the book of Acts begins by revealing to us the secret of this man called Jesus. That all he did was that he began to do, then he now taught. So when I began to understand some of these things, I began to weigh my life, my life of obedience. What errand are you running for Jesus? Is there an errand you are running? Is there a mission that Jesus committed to you that is the description of your life? Or you are trying to blend in, you are trying to, to get views on Facebook, you are trying to get likes, you are trying to trend. And in this day, people are ashamed of being who they are in the place of obedience because it will contradict what is fashionable. It will contradict what is trending. They don't want to earn a name of being outside of the box or swimming against the tide. But Jesus swam against the tide all through his spoken ministry. He was not in conformity with the concept of spirituality in that was established in his time. He brought the reason why he was that fluid was because his undercurrent was obedience. Right. So the, the evangelist begins by telling us, giving us an executive summary of the texture of the kind of service delivery that Jesus made available. And he said, Jesus continued that. Check, go and read Hebrew. Check the Hebrew lexicon, check the Hebrew dictionary. There is one word you will not find in the Hebrew dictionary. It's called, there are two words. One of them is retirement. You know why? Because you don't retire from obeying God. Yeah, you don't. You won't find retirement. I, I'm challenging you. It's not there. There are two words, but I, one of them is retirement. The Bible says that he began to do and to teach until the day that he was taken up. Are you there? That was his preoccupation. That was the errand that he was sent to accomplish. 
and that errand stemmed out of a consistent life that was deliberate and intentional with obedience. And that became the basis of the authority that was in his spoken ministry. He says he continued this until the day he was taken up. All right. Like I said, I want, I want to peep into the notes of Jesus and tell us what Jesus told the people that are coming into this global enterprise of taking the gospel from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. If you are still with me, say Amen. amen. The Bible says that when this capacity building seminar was put together, Jesus gave commandments unto the apostles that he had chosen. Listen to me. Even though this seminar was free, you need to pay a gate fee to access the things that Jesus wanted to teach, but it was not available to the public. In order for you to partake of this, Jesus will need to choose you. It's not as if okay, I'm willing. I, no, no, no. No, no, no. There was a meticulous process of choosing who will be a partaker of this instruction. Are you with me? You know why he admitted them by something that was deliberate? Was because when they were eventually chosen, he began to give them commandments. You see, there is a difference between what happened here and what happens in a lecture. When you attend the lecture, the lecturer is dispensing knowledge. But when you come for a kingdom cantonment, Jesus gives commandments. See, you know, it's, uh, it's different from just a lecture where information is dispensed, knowledge is dispensed, and, and it's, it's wonderful. You don't find the lecturer commanding people. Meanwhile, are you still with me? The proof that Jesus chose you to be a partaker in this lecture, the proof is that he gives you commandments. Now, if he's not giving you commandments, he did not choose you. The ones he chose, he gave them commandments. Hey. Uh, if you don't have any commandment he gave you about how to use money, it means that what you are doing as ministry, the service delivery that you are bringing to the table did not stem out of obedience. There's no regiment, no, no structure of obedience that is in your life. You are not with me. The book of Matthew is different from the book of Mark. The book of Mark is different from the book of Luke. I mean, walls apart totally different if we have time maybe on Sunday we'll talk about that if he has chosen you he will give you commandments he will regulate you he will determine how you use money he will even determine how you speak on the pulpit. And if you violate it, you will, you will lose your peace for days. Because the, the undercurrent of what you are doing is obedience. It's not a good idea you are trying to administer. You are not, <laughs> you are not trying to be popular. So you are not trying to say things that people will like. That if you tell them, you are blessed, they will like it. You may not be called to say that, even though it is trending. And meanwhile, I need to say quickly that there is a certain lifestyle you can sustain that even a prophetic word, you are blessed, will not change you. 
that word can't even rest on your life because you are deficient in obedience your life is far away from what is supposed to be obtainable if the government of God is seated over your soul so the apostles that he chose are the ones that he gives commandments few years ago I was still um, working in the oil industry in my, in my nation and I had a posting from one location to another location I came to the new location and after a while my car was stolen I was expecting God to sympathize with me that now that my car you know has been stolen I was expecting him to be easy on me he now told me that <laughs> my salary in a month those days could buy a car that's my monthly salary I can go to the car shop and buy a car with my monthly salary if any of you here have ever been to Lagos you will notice that there are some buses there that are yellow the Lord said I should not buy a car I should use those buses and you see in the oil industry because of the structure of our salary that's where the big guys are it's 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 iniquity for you to come to the office without a big vehicle you just need to and i i was flowing with the bus so i i thought that after seven months he would have tried me enough to say okay go you can get any car you want I was in that state of yellow buses for seven years because it is not about what is trending <laughs> oh you are not with me <laughs> the man that is willing to obey God has is determined to be shaped by God he is willing to be vulnerable under God's influence over his life is willing and it is those dealings that God gives him because his government is strong over his life that gives him revelatory power in his teaching ministry a man that has not been dealt with by God doesn't have what to teach even if he attends a theological school he will be doling out letters that will kill He's not been forged in the furnace of spiritual dealings. So most of what he's saying is a lie. I know it, a time will come when you will not say amen again. And I will understand. <laughs> Are you still with me? I was in those buses for seven years. And I had the money to buy a car every other month. So this is it. First thing I want you to write is, if you ever ask, can it be done? Without asking, should it be done? You are falling. Let me, let me, those, that is the dialect of obedience that I'm using to craft these sentences. If you ever ask, can it be done? Without asking, should it be done? You are falling. Because you, you are running with ability. You are not running with government. A man under government can have ability, but he doesn't put it to work until his master gives him the go-ahead. So it's not a matter of ability with him. It's a matter of whether he has the sanction of God to go ahead. So I have money to buy a car. But it should not be done. And it was not done for seven years. After seven years, he told me, you don't need to buy a car again. I will, I will give you all the cars that you need. Anytime I know you need it, I'll give you. So it was not about a car. It was about 
me understanding how to work with him even when my cerebral faculty is unfruitful as to what he wants to achieve with the dealings that he's bringing over my life Jesus never contended or contested the authority of his father and because of that he had a teaching ministry that was powerful if you are still with me say amen, amen. second question I need to ask you quickly because the Bible says that the apostles whom he chose he gave them commandments second question I need to ask you is are you really regulated by God because if you are being regulated by God the commandments he has given to regulate you will be at your fingertips now if you memorize something you will forget but when you begin to obey a scripture you will never forget it because every fiber of your being will remember obedience is what makes you remember so there's a, so much teaching going on in church people's lives are not changing is because they don't obey because the moment you begin to obey you will remember you will know why you are not eating when you are fasting and that voice tells you that there's yogurt vanilla yogurt in the fridge have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to jesus or you want to rededicate your life to jesus christ as your lord and savior then say this short prayer Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.